Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am dressed in very vintage, late, 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 late 70s, almost beginning of the 80s, Gianni Versace, the original Gianni Versace, before Donatella took over, before he passed away, jacket. And uh, it's all kind of put, in, you know, I've, I've chose these kind of sandy, darker, orientally kind of tones because today I'm going to talk to you about opium. The original opium, the opium from the 70s. This is the original bottle of the Eau de Toilette. It is 60 milliliters. Let me turn it around so you can see. It's a splash. It's a splash bottle. It's not spray. It's made in France. And it is gorgeous. It has a humongous glass stopper. And the famous little bubble of transparency there. You can see my finger in the back. Um, Opium comes, or came, used to come in this package. Beautiful, elegant, rectangular, almost square kind of looking box. There it is. And it has the original YSL sticker on top. Now, let's get to this fragrance, shall we? I'm going to open it. I use this very seldomly. There's like a little dust inside it already. Because back in the day, perfumes were a bit more natural than they are today. All right, let's see how this baby works. Ooh. Okay. Get off of the. I mean, this stopper is huge, so it's it's a very um, you know. Oh, let's put it on both sides. And the stopper is really big. It's like the opposite of what you know, the um, parfum Chanel parfum stoppers are. So this is for a very generous application. Let's just put it that way. I'm going to just take out all of the perfume from that has kind of tried to not spill out, but just like came out a little bit. Okay, so taking it off. This is the inside. I can't really turn it, guys, because otherwise, of course, obviously it's going to spill. Anyway, this is how it looks open. And... <laughs> Yeah, I can't turn it too much. I can't. I tried. It doesn't work. There's still too much liquid inside. Um, all right. So now to close it, you have to pop it in. There you go. So now it's closed. Okay. Ooh, opium. <laughs> Let's see. Made in 1977, created by Jean Amique and Jean-Louis... Suzak or Suzak. Um, the ingredients, so 1977, huh? we're in the 70s here. Um, we have top notes, pepper, mandarin orange, citruses, plum, coriander, bergamot, West Indian Bay, cloves, jasmine. Then we move on to the middle notes. Orris root, cinnamon, rose, patchouli, lily of the valley, sandalwood, peach, carnation. Carnation and sandalwood in the middle notes, divine. Base notes, musk, incense, amber, castorium, vetiver, opoponax, sandalwood, benzoin, Mir, mirra, mir, mir, mir. <laughs> cedar, vanilla, tolu balsam, or balsam, balsam, labdanum, and coconut. I never felt the coconut in opium, to be honest with you. It's a lot of ingredients for this oriental spicy fragrance, which was marketed for women, but 
it's unisex. Again, this is my personal opinion. Um, opium is incredible and I'm so sad that they have reformulated it and made it become again an example of just a shadow of itself. This is one of those perfumes, yes it's oriental, but it's so pushed to the extreme with its packaging and marketing and they already want it to be like, um, they make it look like something extremely from a distant world where other worldly laws apply. So once you smell it, yes, you, you totally have that oriental feel and vibe to it. There, there's no... There's no questions about it. Um, whether or not that's a good thing, I do not know. It is a bit of a cliche, but at the same time, it's just gorgeous to me. I mean, of course, it smells heavy. I mean, it's, um, it's an oriental heavy, heavy, heavy perfume with, you know, castorium oil, with a, a poponax, a sandalwood, myrrh, um, incense, all those smoky, smoky things combined with, you know, a bit of rose, a bit of sweetness. So, it's not cloying to me, nevertheless. And I mean, of course, I do prefer the, the splash versions to sprays because you could dose them better. I mean, this type of perfume, this type of hardcore uh, perfume, to me, works the best with a stopper. Uh, and... I believe that it has, well, at least on me and I think on everybody, a very, very, very strong silage, a very strong, um, um, how do you call it, resistance to anything, to clothes, to skin, to temperature. So it's a very, it's a very strong scent that in a way, as the word opium would say, is kind of addictive. It, it attaches itself to you and you just need to to smell its sweetness and you need to smell its um, smokiness as well. And it's, it's a very fascinating scent because um, it envelops you in a way that you do not really understand, or at least I don't understand, or at least at the beginning I don't understand because it gives me that, that feeling of being... Um, Dangerous, but at the same time, nourishing. It's almost like a nourishing perfume. It smells artificial as well. It has that like tone of something that is that is uh, outside of your reach and not really within the range of of something you could logically perceive as a human being of today. It like gives you the feeling of of being in another time. And this is a very time specific perfume. I know that it's still in production today and I know that Yves Saint Laurent is, it, it's still one of Yves Saint Laurent's, you know, big um, battle horses, but it's very 70s and, and 80s to me, still today. So I don't know, I have my hand here, hit myself somewhere. Um, it, it allows you to fantasize about other worlds and other lands, but it doesn't really give you that, um, fresh factor, you know, I don't know how to explain this. It doesn't really make you go, oh, wow, this is forever. It, it more, more, it, it more goes, it more, it makes you more feel like, Oh, those were the times. Oh, I feel, I smell how those, those times were. Those were the days. Or, oh, wow, this is so, like, back in the day. So I don't get that vibe from this perfume. I don't get that forever vibe from this perfume. Uh, it's, it's very entrapped in its, in its time. Um, but nevertheless, it delivers from its time the, the best, you know, the essence of its time. And I like perfumes like that. I like when perfumes are capable of triggering memory patterns or emotions from people that, you know, like me, were not even born back then. Um, I still have the feeling that by smelling this, it really gives me, it opens up a door 
and it, it's like a key to a door that kind of allows me to just through scent imagine how those times were, uh, how the 70s were, for example. And that's a great feeling to me. I love when a scent triggers that. It's very Marcel Proust, uh, you know. I'm searching for the lost time. I'm always on the search of, of lost time, of times long gone. And I love when perfumes can trigger that. Opium is definitely some sort of trigger of that kind. I found this baby on an online website, uh, sealed, completely new. You know, somebody has had it in their wardrobe for a long time. And so I had the pleasure and the honor of opening it and, you know, using it for the first time. Um, It's definitely not, you know, projection and sillage uh, and, and resistance, you know, it, it lasts a long time. It's definitely not something to use in summer months because it's, I think the more hot it is outside and the more stale it goes, it has that tendency. It could get a bit stale, you know, if you don't dose it right or if you don't use it in, with the right attitude or in the right, when you're in the right mood and such. So it's kind of complicated because you need to really know where you're going. It's definitely an evening scent. It's not a morning scent. Um, it could be a day scent, but it has to be a cold day. Unless you don't have a very particular dry, dry, dark skin, then I think this perfume could work better with your chemistry, um, even during daytime. Because it's a tricky one. I mean, it, it requires really, really, really masterful uh, dosage. Uh, you can't overdose on this one because it's fatal. Opium is lethal if you OD on it. So I've been told. Um, so let me put another dip on me just to get that intensity. I'm like overdoing it. See, I'm... <laughs> I now I'm ODing on opium. And, um, but it's necessary because I need to get all those notes out of it properly because it's it's hard to to uh, get the right see you have to rub all this off the difficulty with these older perfumes is I mean they have this metal circ circular thing and it it kind of if you leave drops of perfume on it it's going to damage your metal and that's not a cool thing it's going to damage the gold so you have to always wipe off all the residue be perfectly sure that you took it all off if you want to keep your bottles healthy and um, living for a long time, especially if you, know, if you have a lot of perfumes and you're not using the same perfume all the time, but you're rotating, it's kind of hard to, to keep it um, to keep it healthy and fresh and new, the bottle, for a longer time. It's, it, it has the tendency of becoming powdery. At least on me, it has that powdery subtone, uh, which is very pleasant. I love powdery uh, scents. Because um, to me, powder always smells like, you know, like baby powder. It smells clean. It smells fun. It smells... Um, yeah, it smells clean, but with a twist. And especially if you have a kind of a strong perfume like opium, there, there is that twist. Uh, because it's not just clean. It's also kind of dirty and nasty in a way. And it definitely uh, gives you a danger vibe. It makes you, it puts you in the mood, in the right mindset to want to do more out of just an evening out or a night out. It makes you want to push the boundaries a bit more, push the envelope a bit more, you know, flirt a bit more. Maybe it, it helps you psychologically kind of get that extra kick that you need to just Go more out there for it, or on the hunt, maybe, for your prey. <laughs> and it's, um, it definitely puts the F in fun, like a capital F, because uh, it's, a, it's a power perfume. And every power perfume, if used with the right mentality and state of mind, can bring a lot of joy and fun. If, on the other hand, dosed wrongly, causes a lot of pain and suffering. So be very careful what you do with your opium, people. And thank you so much for watching my um, review, uh, my video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you wish to see more from my channel. 
And for all of those who have subscribed to now, thank you so much. Thank you so much for subscribing and following me and uh, letting me make all these videos for you because they're a lot of fun for me to make. I hope um, you're enjoying them still. And see you very, very, very soon. Love you. Take care. Bye.